everyone. Welcome this afternoon to our live stream. Um, my name is May and I work in the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and Media. Um, so we're going to be joined today by our Deputy Dean, um, James Russell, Dr. James Russell, who I'll introduce um, just now. Hello. Hello there, James. Hello, May. Good to be here. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, so we're going to give you lots of information about our postgraduate study courses um, it, and particularly in, any international students that are joining us today as well. So if you have any questions for us at all, please do pop them into the into the live chat and we'll try and answer those during our live stream for you. Um, let us know where you're from, where you're watching from, what courses you're interested in um, and any questions at all, we'll, we'll try and answer them for you. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna pass over to, to Jim now and uh, if you could just introduce yourself and tell us a bit about the the faculty that would be fantastic yeah i'd love to so uh yeah may is right so my name's james russell you can call me jim <laughs> as may will uh <laughs> and i am deputy dean for the faculty of computing engineering and media now my background is from the kind of media side of things that previously i was head of the kind of media department and um I, my background is really teaching film and i teach on our international film production masters so if you come here for that you will see me in a slightly different capacity, but probably still lecturing at you about things. Um, and what I'm here to do today really is talk you through the courses we have at DMU, our postgraduate offer, but also because we have quite a lot of courses and we don't have a huge amount of time, I'm also going to give you a little sense of what it's like at DMU and what you can expect from coming here to study if that's what you choose to do. And we'd love to have you. Um, so I'll start by giving you a bit of an overview of the faculty and the kind of environment you'll find yourself in. And then I'll move on to talk through some of our courses and some of our schools. So all of our teaching is delivered in three schools, computing, engineering and media, as the title suggests. And that probably gives you a good sense of the type of courses that we have. There's a broad range of postgraduate study opportunities at DMU and there's a broad range of postgraduate study opportunities in our faculty as well. So you might be here because you're interested in investigative journalism. You might be here because you're interested in data analytics or, or aeronautical engineering. There's a huge cross section of things you can do here at DMU. Um, I think what you'll find is you'll join a, a fairly big, lively group of students and a student body here at DMU. Um, in our faculty alone, we have about four to 5,000 undergraduate students, and then we have about 1,000 postgraduate students. So that probably gives you a rough sense of the kind of mix of undergraduate to postgraduate. The postgraduate is a big part of what we do, but you'll also be joining a community of students, you know, of all different backgrounds and ages. Um, and if you're interested in undergraduate as well, we have separate open days for those, but we can always give you a little bit of information about those courses too. Um, of those, a sizable proportion of students come from overseas. So, you, you know, particularly aware if you're here for a live stream um, and if you're interested in postgraduate, your background may not be coming from Britain or the English education system. You may be coming as an international student. And again, you know, around half of our postgraduate students are international. So that probably gives you a good sense of the type of student body you'll be joining. It, they are quite diverse, both in terms of background and in terms of the type of things people are studying. So you will be joining a community of people, whether you come from what we would call a home student in the UK, or you're coming internationally, you'll be joining a group of students who aren't in a different boat to you at all. There's a really broad mix of the type of people here. Um, and that's also reflected in the type of courses we offer. So to give you some sense of how the, how the whole place is structured and where you might fit if you come here, um, I'll talk you through our, our sort of schools and our courses. I would say you can find out more. So I, I'm only going to be able to give you a tiny snapshot today um, over the sort of next 10 minutes. I'm going to try not to talk for longer than that, although I'm sure if you have any questions, I'll answer them. So if you have questions, feel free to put them on the chat or feel free to, um, you know, uh, let us know subsequently. We can always get back to you and we'll try and answer them today. There are also a number of live streams and live chat opportunities today relating to specific courses. So after this, you'll get to find out about accommodation and, um, and finance and indeed our sort of work experience opportunities. Um, we also are there to tell you a bit more about those courses in particular. I will give you a broad overview of what it's like at DMU. Um, so firstly, let me start with, in no particular order, let me start with engineering. So um, our engineering school is called Engineering and Sustainable Development. 
And it probably gives you a good sense of what we do in engineering. So we offer quite a, a cross section of different courses. So uh, we do offer mechanical engineering, we offer electronic engineering, we specialize in aeronautical engineering and mechatronics, building you know, robots and other kinds of uh, things. We also offer a very popular course on uh, engineering management, which combines the study of, of the, you know, you're advancing your engineering skills with a sort of commercial focus. Um, and we offer courses in engineering and sustainability in particular, sustainable building design, sustainability, uh, uh, more generally engineering and sustainable development. Um, that, that focus on sustainability probably gives you a good insight into where we're at. So DMU has for a long time been home to a sustainable development research focus and teaching focus. And I think we've been at the forefront of teaching sustainable development for almost 30 years. Um, I'll talk a little bit about facilities shortly, but one of the places you will be taught physically when you come to DMU, if you choose to take an engineering course, is the Queen's Building. Well, the Queen's Building, uh, you know, was opened by the Queen back in uh, 1995. It also won Green Building of the Year, and it's it's one of the world's first self-regulating climate-controlled buildings. So, and and it, it was very much a product of the kind of focus we've always had on engineering and sustainable development. And that continues today. Um, our engineering school is made up of really world leading academics with a focus on sustainability and sustainable design. Um, it's not the only thing that we do, but we are very committed to ensuring that we produce engineers who are ready for what is quite a kind of radically changing world at times with, with radically changing priorities. And our courses do reflect that. At the same time, you know, students at DMU, and um, those opportunities are open for postgraduates through societies as well as undergraduate students, can take place in things like our racing program, DMU Formula Student Program, um, where we have a, both a physical car and electric car and we race. And there are all sorts of other opportunities. So we're not, we don't just do sustainable design, but it does really underpin kind of what, what we are as an institution and our sort of ethical priorities. Um, the courses in engineering are accredited, so that means when you, and, and they are across our, all of our schools, but in engineering's case, there are several accrediting bodies. And what accrediting means is that um, an external body, in this case, the Institute of uh, Engineering and Technology, they ensure that our content is fit for purpose. So it reflects where industry is now. So all of our courses are accredited or going through accrediting process, not all of them, but um, many of our courses are accrediting if there's an accrediting body out there. To do it so you will you will find that your course reflects sort of industry needs depending on what you choose to focus on that might be there within the accreditation it will also be there in industry links so again i think it's a priority for the whole faculty whether you're interested in music or, or engineering or computing to ensure that you you kind of develop the skills that you will need to go on to work in industry uh, especially if you're studying at master's level because i you know i know that taking a master's is about refining your skills and is about taking you to the next level. Um, so we do work with a number of industry partners. I mean, just in engineering, they include, but are not limited to Jaguar Land Rover, BMW, Airbus. Um, there are various others. Uh, and we also have a very active industry liaison committee in engineering. I We consult with industry regularly to ensure that our course content really reflects the needs of engineering as they currently are. Um, we have, I think, six or seven postgraduate courses of various different kinds. And do check the website to make sure, you know, what is available, what is open. Some are available for January start, some are available for September starts. Um, they're very popular. Uh, I think our most popular at the moment is engineering management, but all of the engineering courses are extremely popular. That doesn't mean that you won't get a place, but it does mean you should kind of apply early and apply decisively, I think is really helpful to us. Um, but do have a look at that mix. And we have pretty good facilities, I would say. In fact, I'll, I'll come on to the facilities when I talk a bit more generally about the, the faculty. Um, so there is engineering. There is also computing. Now, again, computing is home to a really um, outstanding world leading team of academics who will teach you. I think it's fair to say that computing is probably our biggest single group of programs in terms of student numbers. Um, we have more students studying computing, a few more than engineering and more studying media courses as well. Uh, engineering is pretty similar. Um, and we offer a really diverse range of computing programs in the same way as we do with, with engineering. I mean, at postgraduate, that might be um, software engineering or computer science. It might be 
cybersecurity, which is a particular area of expertise of ours. It might be data analytics. And I think data analytics in particular is a real growth area, um, not just for people from a computing background. I know from my own experience working in media that data analytics is becoming an increasingly vital part of careers for people who might previously have thought of themselves more as media specialists. And I know the same is true of, of engineering and indeed of all sorts of backgrounds. Right? Um, I think you, you, you will know sitting here that we are in a world where um, computing based skills are absolutely central to almost any interaction or business proposition that we have. Um, and our computing courses do really reflect that. Uh, we are we do have a real team of experts and our, our expertise is across the range of computing. I think we're particularly well known for our cybersecurity work. We are accredited by um, the government. We do uh, we are uh, one of the leading cybersecurity centers in the UK and obviously that is a central part of of the field now. So our cybersecurity offer at undergraduate and postgraduate is also very popular much like engineering and indeed the media school which i'll talk about in a moment courses again are accredited and some courses uh um have a sort of kite mark of accreditation others we almost always work with industry so we we will work with industry partners and, and student placements and, and brief opportunities are very much part of what we do in computer science uh and the other computer software based courses as well um I think as with engineering and as with media, our curriculum is very highly responsive to what's happening in the field, what changes are occurring, what you can expect. And finally, media. So obviously my background is in the media school. Um, like computing, media has a slightly fewer number of courses, but they remain quite diverse like computing. So that they might be music technology, uh, they might be film production, they might be um, investigative journalism. In each case, those courses kind of are tailored much more to a specific subset of skills that you might want to develop having already studied in those areas or by seeking to move into those areas. Um, we're very proud of our partnerships in the media school. So um, to give some examples, uh, the, the film production course was established with a major British studio in its initial form and benefits from that early uh, involvement of industry people in shaping the curriculum. Our investigative journalism course is delivered with Channel 4 News, who are a leading news TV news provider in the UK, and it is built upon their training programme for investigative journalism. Uh, and our music programme is really based on uh, uh, many years of expertise at the cutting edge of music technology and performance. And we have a very uh, well-regarded team of scholars here, uh, the Music um, Technology and Innovation Institute, who are very well known for their music performance, but also for the kind of international work they do around music. Um, we also have those opportunities to work with industry partners built in, not just Channel 4, but also the BBC and other news providers. Many of our graduates go on to work straight into, into the media industries, and they find that what the postgraduate qualification does is it, it closes the gap between where they might be in completing their degree and where they want to be in terms of their career. It not only gives them the skills, but it also gives them the kind of networking opportunities too. And I think that's the case with all of our programs. Um, whatever you choose, you'll benefit from really great facilities. Um, so for media, that might be our production studios. We have something called the Creative Technology Suite, where we specialize in music and video. Um, it might include our engineering labs based in the Queen's building, that environmental building where some of our courses are based. It might include our flight simulator or wind tunnel, some of that aeronautical specialist equipment. Um, we also have graphic design studios, art-based studios. We have uh, our cybersecurity center, which again is a world's leading site for both teaching, but also managing cybersecurity. Um, we are an on-campus university. So that means we deliver our teaching here. We're not, you know, we have some uh, uh, range of buildings and different places, but but our teaching is face-to-face -face teaching. So in coming to DMU, you'll be coming to Leicester as well, which we might talk about later on. Um, I think it's also true as if you stay and go to some of the other live stream events, we have great work experience and outreach opportunities for students. Depending on your visa, you may be able to take work placement or work experience opportunities here, here at DMU. And we do, if you're an international student, if you're a home student, you absolutely will be able to. Um, we do have a very active placements team and work experience team here at DMU to support students. Um, I think it's fair to say that we are very focused on making sure our graduates 
especially our postgraduate students, are ready to go on to, to take high level uh, employment in a range of global media industries. So that's what we're set up to do. We are set up to uh, make sure you have the skills, but also the confidence to move into the field that you want to move into. Um, if you, for two more minutes, if you are an international student, I look to May to tell me if I'm going on too much. I'm sure I am. Um, yeah, so there are some, don't worry, I see if there are questions, I will come to questions very shortly. Not May at I all, Jim, this is all interesting stuff and I think our viewers would like, would very much like to hear some more, but um, we, we actually have a question from uh, Madalena, um, specifically about investigative journalism. Now, I know this isn't about just the media courses, but I wonder if you could just spend a, a minute or two just telling us a bit more about that particular course. Um, yeah, of course. So investigative journalism was set up in partnership with Channel 4 News. So Channel 4 News, if you know the UK media environment, I don't know if you're from the UK or elsewhere, Channel 4 News is a sort of leading TV provider actually owned by ITN, who are even bigger media entity in the UK. Um, now, they train investigative journalists as part of what they do. Uh, and they initially ran a very small training program for their own investigative journalists. And then we started working with them and, and the same staff have developed this course. So I think it's fair to say that investigative journalism is a kind of leading light in terms of training investigative journalists in, in the UK, but also elsewhere. We do have partnerships with other international universities of various kinds. Um, what we do is we teach a combination of things on that course. So partly... It is those um, core skills of how you manage an investigation. So what it, what it is to actually find out information, what it is to get data, how you might carry out interviews, how you might uh, engage with people who perhaps sometimes don't want to talk to you, how you might navigate the law and the legal framework to understand what it is you can and can't say. It also gives you some media production skills. So it allows you to develop your skills as, a, um, as an actual... Uh, someone who can produce content. Uh, and we do this in partnership with Channel 4. So, you know, we do have masterclasses and guest speakers, both from Channel 4 and from the BBC and elsewhere. Uh, almost all of our graduates, as I understand it, as I know, have gone on to get jobs working for news providers, usually in the UK, but not always, um, uh, both print and TV or, or other media forms. Um, the The... The reason they've been able to do that is because they've engaged very quickly with the industry. So they have um, they have pitched in front of people who are news commissioners. They have put together programs. We see in the press quite regularly stories from DMU's investigative journalism students. So it gives you a real real world kind of uh, quality to your to your education. Brilliant. Thank you. Yes, if you have a look on our website, there's often news stories about um, what our investigative journalism graduates have gone on to do and it's it's quite spectacular isn't it some of the things some of the roles and jobs they've gone to on be to be honest also if you hear about any stories coming out of Leicester uh, they usually are students right <laughs> so uh, they're usually students based in Leicester who are just doing their undergraduate degree you now have those links to the national press um, but it's also the case that quite a lot of content not just on Channel 4 but also on the BBC and elsewhere UK Fantastic. news international our graduates are out there and that and that cause more than any other in the media school is the one where the links are so direct that it's a kind of feeder pipeline for, for investigative journalism. Absolutely. So I hope that gives you a bit of oh, uh, uh, she's she says, thank you very much. You're very welcome. And um, I study sociology and criminology. Is a background in journalism necessary? No, you have exactly the right set of skills. So do please apply, mm -hmm. Madalena. Um, I, you know, part of the purpose of the course is to give people the skills to carry out investigations. So already having done criminology uh, or sociology will really help you in the same way that you'll find people on the course who come from uh, journalism already and are in the industry and are seeking to advance their investigation skills. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so we have another question about cyber security. Um, how helpful will be uh, cyber, MSC cyber security course for going into the cyber security field? I mean, that's its aim. So, so it will be very helpful <laughs> is the short answer. I mean, obviously, um, cyber security is a really growing field and it's a growing preoccupation. I think, you know, obviously, my, mine is a media and journalism background, and I see stories in the news about cybersecurity all the time. Um, but the goal of the course is to, you really will be working 
with one of the leading cybersecurity teaching teams in the world. And it is a qualification that you can take forward. So much as our investigative journalism course has those links and has that track record of really shifting wh wherever you might be to a very close working relationship with industry, so does cybersecurity. So I would absolutely say that cybersecurity, one, is a really essential skill set if you want to work in technology. So you, if you're doing computer science already, you may have done a little of it. Two, that specialization is 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 not um, essential, is very helpful in terms of allowing you to go on to work in, in the field of cybersecurity. It's, there, there are lots of or several good places to go. I mean, I would say it because I'm biased, but I do I do know that DM uses is one of the best in the world for ensuring that you you build those skills and make those links. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the one of the fields we're absolutely known for, isn't it, Jim? So, yeah, hundred percent. Fantastic. Okay, so you want me to, to keep going with a few bit of information <laughs> about the about the place, or you want yeah, to ask? Well, I'll, I'll ask you some questions actually sure. that might be of interest to our viewers today. So do. Um, yeah, do carry on asking any any further questions if you have them, if you're watching. Um, but I'm going to just dive in with some questions now. So tell us a bit about campus. So um, what's it like for anybody who's not set foot on campus yet? Um, can you describe it for us? So we're, I mean, I could twist my monitor around and show you, but we are <laughs> relatively, relatively unique. Um, not completely unique, but relatively unique amongst UK universities in that we are a city centre campus. So we're based in the centre of Leicester. We're five minutes walk from the, the stores and the shops and, and whatever's going on in Leicester. At the same time, we are a campus based university. So we have, a unlike many city centre universities where they kind of sprawl, if you've ever been to some of the London universities or, or um, some of them in, in Manchester and elsewhere, they're sort of sprawled across the city. We're not. We're focused in a very particular area of the city and we have... Um, uh, I think it's a square, half a square mile, a square mile of, of facilities, all within easy access of one another. So you're not spread across the city or walking around. And our student accommodation is based in the same area, too. Um, now, I am currently in the Queen's building where cybersecurity is based, in the Gateway building, rather, where cybersecurity is based. Uh, two minutes walk away is our Queen's building where engineering and media are based. Two minutes walk away again is our Clefham building where journalism is based. Um, and we have several other buildings which we use for teaching across campus. It is a, you will see some photos of it. It is a beautiful campus, DMU, and it is very impressive. Um, it's recently modernized in the last five years. Um, we have a really good range of up-to-date facilities on campus, especially for students studying computing, engineering, and media. I can see a question about the library from Super Harry. Um, <laughs> Uh, what about the library facilities? Well, again, I'm two minutes away from the library as well. So the library is both a resource for um, uh, students to find, access materials, books, etc. It's also a resource to use for carrying out work, right? So our library is increasingly both a physical and digital space. It's a big library. Uh, it's open 24-7, uh, 365 days a year, as far as I understand it. So you can always go there, even on Christmas Day. Um, there is always a cafe, there are always facilities there, but it is that mix of study space, resources, books, journals, etc., and digital space. So if you're doing something uh, like cybersecurity, or in my case, sort of film production, we do have uh, computers set up in the library that are specialist images. So an image is what is on the computer, what capability does it have? We do make sure that no matter what you're doing, you can access the materials you need to, to do your study. It has to be said, most of our labs in the buildings are open you know, in good hours, so you can also attend and use use the specific facilities too. For example, if you're here to study music, you can book your music studios 24-7, right? You can book them throughout the night. So if you need to record a performance or something like that, and you can only all get together at night, you can book that space, right? And actually use those, those facilities. Um, in terms of job opportunities, well, firstly, I mean, Leicester is a center for certain kinds of media activities and, and um, tech industries, the East Midlands is a real center for tech industry. So there are all sorts of opportunities in the region. Um, we're also an hour from London. So a lot of opportunities for jobs in the UK might be based in London. We're very near. So that means we have both a regional set of industries and uh, um, and uh, easy access to sort of national centers as well. Absolutely. Yes. Le Leicester is very, very commutable, isn't it? To, yeah, to lots of um, not only London, but lots of other big cities in the area as well. So 
Um, fantastic. So um, you've talked a little bit about the, the, the sort of general facilities. Is there any um, extracurricular activities that postgraduate students can get involved in? Yeah, 100%. So uh, they range from kind of trips and other sorts of opportunities that be organised by your team. So this year, I know for undergraduates and for postgraduates, there's trips to uh, America, there's trips to Italy. Um, we organise activities for our students, certainly our postgraduate students in my area on the film course. We've previously gone to the Berlin Film Festival and done various other sort of film related activities. Um, that's as part of your course. There's also those work experience opportunities, too, that we, we are there to facilitate. Um, many of our courses can be taken with placements built in. Right, so that allow you to, to gain a placement and go and get that work experience. Um, at the same time, DMU, like a lot of universities, is very active in terms of its societies. So there is a society, society for almost everything that you want to get involved with. Now, if you're an international student watching, that means there are international societies. So you, will, you may come here. You are absolutely not alone. There are societies for almost all international groups. And there are also societies for almost all interests. Um, they range from our very, very active sports society. So almost all sports are covered um, from a football to American football to basketball to, to many more. And we actually have really close links to the sporting institutions of the city as well. We are five minutes from King Power Stadium where Leicester City play. Um, I was there. We got beaten by Manchester City 1-0 at the weekend. So <laughs> it, that's part of our life as well. Um, you know, Leicester has those, those opportunities. Um, but there are also societies that, you know, that go from the sports societies through to the Game of Thrones society, board game society, whatever your interests are, you'll be able to find groups of like minded people. And that social side of university, even as a postgraduate student, continues to be really important. Yeah, there's so much to get involved with, isn't there? It's, it's actually finding the time to, do, to fit it yeah. all in. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, we've just had another question from Cheyenne as well about energy engineering. Yeah, you so you want to know a bit more about energy engineering. Um, so obviously, this is the branch of engineering that is concerned with uh, energy generation. Um, it's very, the... very topical at the moment, isn't it, with yeah. all the, the, the prices and everything like that. So, <laughs> Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, this is in some ways it's part of our commitment to sustainability. So we aren't just teaching you about energy generation, but we absolutely are. So you'll be taught the engineering skills and requirements around generation of energy. Now, that partly means understanding the mix of energy that um, uh, that we need in terms of national infrastructure and stuff like that. So you will learn about nuclear. You will know about coal, learn about coal. You'll learn a lot about renewables, too, obviously. Um, but crucially, what you'll do is you'll focus on the systems, processes and technology required to actually uh, develop, manage the, the, that field, you know, energy generation and energy management and maintenance. That That is the key focus of energy engineering. Um, uh, undergraduate and, and um, postgraduate courses are accredited uh, by the IMECI, the um, Institute of Mechanical Engineers and by the IET, the Institution for Engineering and Technology. Um, it does combine a bit of sort of design and quite a lot of core advanced engineering skills as well. So hopefully that's helpful. It is one of those courses that, that takes your engineering skills and really allows you to specialise in a particular mode of engineering and, and hopefully plan your future career in that, that area. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, well, we're almost at time, actually. But uh, is, is there anything else you'd like to add, Jim? Any any advice for students looking to looking to apply, looking to start? Well, I think um, we would always advise to, you know, if you want to choose DMU, obviously find out as much as you can about any university. Um, but uh, we would always advise you to apply as early as you can. So we have a good sense of what, you know, who's coming. These are popular courses, our postgraduate courses. Uh, and if you want to get a place to apply early, I think in terms of coming here as a student, you know, postgraduate study is a little different from undergraduate study in that it is more focused, more intense, right? So you, you kind of need to be ready for that. To be a postgraduate student is to um, be much closer to closing the gap between what skills you have and, and where you want to work. So our courses kind of reflect that, that greater sense of focus and that greater sense of purpose. Um, 
if you're coming here as an international student, I guess I would just reiterate how much support there is for international students. Um, we have a Centre for English Language Learning, which is um, accredited by the British Council, which can support with language skills. You obviously need to pass your IELTS or equivalent qualification. Uh, we have a scheme called iBuddies, International Buddies, where if you come here uh, and you, you know, it, it, sometimes changing countries or things like that can be uh, a challenge, right? We have a buddy scheme where you're partnered up with another international student who's been here for a while who can help you with that journey and kind of introduce you to the support mechanisms you need. Um, Brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Well, I, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for at the minute. And I, there are some a few more questions, but I would advise definitely watch the um, live streams that are coming up um, a little bit later. So we've got the accommodation, careers, finance one as well. And um, if you have any particular questions about fees and things like that, um, as as Jim's already said, you can find out more about the courses on our website. So do have a good read through that as well. And um, and as we've covered, you know, there's lots to do. Um, once you're at Dim on foot. If you just the support is all there, isn't it? So you've just got to to, to look for it and ask someone, and uh, we're there to support you sort of every step of the way. So, um, thank you very much, Jim. Um, thank you everybody for watching and for asking all your questions. And for those of you that are going to be joining DMU soon, we look forward to seeing you on campus. Thank you very much. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone.